if we look at uh, the markets we are off the day's high uh, but then again we have started to move up 61 points higher so now about 25 points uh, away from the day's highest point but at a point we were just up 40 45 points so there has been a 10 point recovery in the market uh, let's pull up the stock of Hinduja Global they declared numbers uh, uh, earlier it's a strong set of numbers uh, let's just look at what uh, the stock is doing I think it should be flat uh, there should be a positive bias but let's just uh, uh, wait and see the management uh, is uh, now joining us uh, CEO uh, Mr. Partha Sarkar is now joining us on the phone line Induja solution is up about 16 odd percent it's up 16 percent on the back of numbers uh, so if you could just tell us about the 23 percent growth that we have seen in this quarter very strong set of numbers yeah that's right uh, this if you break down the 23 percent number the organic growth number is about 14 percent and that's good so because we've continued to invest in sales and marketing and uh, that's paying back uh, on those organic growth numbers. The inorganic growth number is about 6%. That's the two acquisitions that we did last year, Colibrium and the India BPO business. And the FX impact in that is about 3.1%. So that's how the 23.1% comes up. Large part of this has been a turnaround that we've been able to do in Canada. We had some pressures in Canada last year. The domestic business and the healthcare business that we acquired last year also had some pressures on profitability last year. Those have turned around and started to contribute very positively. And overall volume growth. We are opening centers in Jamaica, Bangalore, Chennai, and in Philippines. So overall, because of strong growth and the turnaround that we've had in these three businesses that I mentioned, we've been able to post these strong set of numbers for quarter one. Right. Do you expect such performance to continue? Typically, the first half of the year is uh, slower than the second half. There is a fair amount of seasonality in the businesses, uh, in our business. The holiday season brings in additional volumes in the second half of the year. Also, that our healthcare business goes through its annual renewal cycles in quarter three and quarter four. So we do believe that these numbers may actually end up improving in the second half of the year. The quarter two could be probably in similar lines, but uh, the second half of the year's, so year is when we believe these things could improve further. Right. You know, can you just talk to us about the margin, sir? The margin number has come in at close to 12% versus 7.5. That's because of the Canada operations that you mentioned? Yeah, three things contributed to that. Actually, four things contributed to that. One is we've been able to push more offshore, and that's obviously at a higher margin. The Canada turnaround in quarter four has helped us because Canada in quarter one has positively contributed. Similarly, the India domestic business, which was under pressure last year, broke even in March of 2016 and has positively contributed in this quarter. And I talked about the Colibrium healthcare platform that we built, uh, that we bought last year. We had to invest in that platform to make it more robust and add new features and functionalities. So now that is selling really well. So you have contribution from volume growth and you have contribution from turnaround of Canada, India domestic and our Colibrium businesses. That's contributing to the turnaround in margins. So, you know, from uh, about 9.4, the margins have contracted quite significantly. This is the first time we are seeing a decent increase happening in. Uh, is it a focus sort of, a, you know, number that has been delivered? And do you expect that now the worst in terms of margins is at least behind? Uh, can you tell me where you got 9.4 number from? Uh, sir, from the FY16 number earlier. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so as I told you, last year we have had pressures on profitability because of the causes that I've already mentioned. So we believe that those things are behind us now. So we need to be able, we should be able to do better in margins in this year for sure. Right. Uh, so as far as total debt is concerned, uh, we are comfortable around the debt. And now that cash flow from operations, I was also looking after working capital is a decently positive number. We'll start uh, to look at uh, reducing debt. Yeah, if you look at even this quarter, we paid down some amount of debt. So our debt profile actually is very debt in the books that should cause for concern. If you look at the multiple of EBITDA, there's hardly anything. So it's working capital and some term loans that we've had for the acquisitions that we've done in the past. So debt levels are comfortable and we, uh, through the cash generation, we should be able to pay down the debt 
as per the schedule that we have. Right. Uh, so as far as the capex needs are concerned as you said that we've done some acquisition capex needs were higher in the last two years uh, now that you know we are seeing a turnaround happening in will capex needs also be substantially lower this year the capex that we have planned in our budgets this year is much lower than last year it's at about 160 to 170 crore level Right. Uh, and sir, you know, quarterly, uh, you know, there has been, uh, I was just looking at the last five quarters numbers, you know, uh, there has been quite, uh, they have been quite volatile. You expect them to be stable now that, uh, you know, the, the points that you mentioned about renegotiation, about volume growth, at least that will get stability and predictability to the numbers? I believe that uh, there will be much uh, greater stability going forward. You're right, we did have volatility on account of the factors last year that I talked about. Those things are under control. Most of those businesses are starting to do well. There are some weaknesses still that we see in Canada, but I don't think that will impact as badly as it impacted us last year. But we are still keeping a watchful eye on Canada. Right, so just a last word before we conclude. In Q4, the company had cut the dividend to 1.25 rupees versus 5 rupees quarterly till earlier. Uh, you know, can we just expect normalized rates of dividend what you have been paying to your shareholders from here on? We have doubled that dividend from 1.5 to almost 2.5. I mean, it's almost double. But uh, what we have taken as a stance is that we want to conserve cash and use that cash to pay down our debt. So that's the new outlook that we are trying to uh, build towards. This is not an account of dividend signaling on profits. The profitability is going to be good. But we want to use the cash for ultimate use. Right, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for explaining us about uh, the numbers and what's the way forward. That was Induja Solution up 15% right now. And the management saying there that, you know, they've done a lot of changes that has helped in the numbers and probably that has lead. Are to you know this sort of uh, performance coming in 15 percent higher the management is hopeful of a better fy17 and q1 which they have delivered is quite strong taking a break coming back in two minutes we'll uh, get in a global voice michael every